Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about shortest remaining time next scheduling algorithm or also known as SRTN scheduling algorithm. So first of all, what is selection criteria or we can say what is the criteria to select a new process. In this algorithm, the process whose remaining time or whose remaining runtime is shortest is served as first. That means every time a new process arrives at that time, the process complete execution time is compared with the current running's remaining time. If the new process requires less time to complete its execution than a current running time, then the current process will be suspended and the new process will be started. So it is also known as preemptive version of shortest job for scheduling algorithm. Next, what is the decision mode? It is a preemptive means when a new process arrives, its total time is compared with the current process remaining time and if the new process required or needs less time to finish than the current process, then the current process is suspended and the new process will be started. So it is known as preemptive version of shortest job for scheduling algorithm. Preemptive means if the process don't want to stop itself, then also operating system or some other process or scheduler will forcefully stop that process because of some reason. Implementation, this algorithm is simply implemented by using FIFO queue, but all the process in the queue are sorted in ascending order on their remaining runtime. And when the CPU becomes free, a process from the first position or process towards head side in a queue is selected to run. Now next move further to the example of shortest remaining time next scheduling algorithm. Same example that we already seen in FCFS as well as SCF algorithm. Now we will draw the grand chart for these four processes. So here initially starting at time 0, only one process P0 is there in queue means only one process is arrived at a time T0. So initially processor is allocated to process P0 so it's turn for process P0 now at 1 millisecond a new process P1 is arrived so this process P0 is executed up to 1 millisecond so at 1 millisecond there are two process process P0 and process P1 so process P1 and P0 there these are the two processes in the queue now process P1, it's a new process that requires 6 milliseconds to complete its execution, so it's 6. Process P0 requires 10 milliseconds, but out of 10 milliseconds, here 1 millisecond is already executed. So 10 minus 1, that is still required 9 milliseconds. That is remaining time to complete its execution. Now if we compare 6 and 9, then 6 is a less, that is shortest time. So next turn is for process P1. So here this process P1 is forcefully suspended or stopped and processor is allocated to new process that is process P1. So next turn is for process P1. Now at 3 seconds a new process P2, P2 is arrived. So up to 3 millisecond here process P1 is executed. Now at 3 millisecond again there are 3 process in the queue. Process P0 requires steel 9 process P2 that is new process that requires 2 millisecond to execute its completion and process P1 that is already executing that requires 6 millisecond out of 6 2 millisecond is already executed so now required 2 millisecond so out of these 3 process P2 requires less time to complete its execution so here P1 is forcefully stopped and next turn is for process P2 process P2 again at 5 millisecond new process is arrived so from 3 millisecond to it requires 2 milliseconds so up to 5 here this process P2 is completed because it requires only 2 millisecond and already executed for 2 milliseconds so process P2 is over now again 3 process in the queue P0 P1 and P3 P0 P1 and P3 P0 requires 9 millisecond, P1 requires 4 and P3 is a new process, again it requires 4 millisecond. Now here 
both of these process p2 and p3 requires same time to complete the execution but whenever such situation is arised at that time first come first serve will execute means the process that comes first will get chance first to execute so here if we consider process p1 is the first process that arrives in the queue so next one is for process p1 it requires 4 millisecond so 5 plus 4 that is 9 millisecond now only two process p0 and p3 again if we could consider p0 requires 9 millisecond remaining time p3 requires 4 millisecond remaining time so next one is for p3 so p3 9 plus 4 that is 13 only one process that is p0 remaining in the queue so last turn is for process p0 that is 13 plus 9 that is 22 now all the process are completed now let us move further find out the finish time again move from right hand side and towards left hand side so process p0 it's finished at 22 so it's 22 for process p1 p0 p3 and p1 so p1 finish at 9 so here is 9 then after process p2 p0 p3 p1 and then p2 so it's 5 5 p3 p0 and p3 that is finished at 13 milliseconds so it's 13 again find out turnaround time that is t1 minus t0 so for process p0 22 minus 0 that is 22 9 minus 1 that is 8 5 minus 3 that is 2 13 minus 5 that is 8 then after waiting time that is t at turnaround time minus delta t that is burst time so for, for process p0 22 minus 10 that is 12 8 minus 6 that is 2 2 minus 2 that is 0 8 minus 4 that is 4 now if you want to find out average TAT that is average turnaround time then it is addition of all these values divided by number of process that is 10 millisecond same way average waiting time is 4.5 that is addition of all these values divided by number of process that is 4 is equals to 4.5 next move further do advantages of shortest remaining time next scheduling algorithm first one is less waiting time means here process need to wait for a less time as compared to other algorithm as well as quite good response for a short process means a short process will get immediately chance to execute itself so both of these advantages are same as the top shortest of first now next move further do disadvantages of shortest remaining time next scheduling algorithm first one is again same as SAF again it is difficult to estimate remaining time necessary to complete its execution so we cannot easily implement this algorithm because we cannot easily identify the estimate remaining time that are required to complete its execution and second one is same as uh, shortage of first starvation is possible for a long process means long process may not get chance to execute in such cases that long process may have to wait forever it will never get cpu to execute itself and last one is the most important that is context which overhead is there means every time or whenever a new process will arrive at that time it will check the new process execution time or the complete burst time with the current process or the current running process remaining time if the new process requires less time that the current process will be suspended and new process will be started so during that time whatever the context which will occur that is one type of overhead means during that time the processor will not perform any type of execution that's why that is simply overhead so in this algorithm context which overhead it there means we will get or our cpu become idle for that time these are the disadvantages of shortest remaining time next algorithm. Thank you very much.